All right, hello everyone, and I'm here today with the one and only Squid. And me and the Squid are gonna play a new campaign in Sigma Total Squid. War called the Jade Dragon. So why are we playing Jade Dragon? Um, we, um, he just got added to Warhammer in the brand new Shadows of Change DLC. Exactly right. And Grant, and this guy is for Grand Cathay, uh, and he starts in two places. He actually starts in Lustria, where he'll be fighting a lot of lizard men, and he has a home base back in Grand Cathay. Have you seen that yet? Yes. I, I have spotted that already, and there are, um, I have already made a deal um, with one person, um, an, another one of um, the Grand Cathay people, the um, Iron Dragon. Oh, yeah. I mean, Iron Dragon, that's one of his brothers. Did you know that? Yeah. So these dragon guys are all siblings of each other, and so they're working together to sort of protect Grand Cathay. So um, I made a deal non-aggression. Non-aggression pact? Yep. Always a good one to have, because you want to make sure to have them not attack you. Now, they're, not, they're not very likely to attack you, though, as they are, obviously, from Grand Cathay he, and, and he, your friends. He gave me, like, 95 coins for that one. Oh, video. yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. So this is my, I don't know, probably fourth or fifth time playing Jade Dragon right here, and what I've noticed is you can't everyone likes you a whole bunch so they they pay you a lot of money just to let you live now if you're all wondering why the squid is joining me on stream today well squid you're what seven years old seven seven, seven. years old and i think it's hilarious that you and me are probably only only about 50 people in the entire world that have played this dlc and uh yeah but you said you wanted to start streaming with me a little bit because you have fun playing it and so i said all right man i'd love to do it with you and we are going to skip the cut scene Okay, and it says Path to Victory, the Jade Court. So we got our Wuxing Compass, uh, which helps to empower the stuff we're doing, and we're empowering that compass. And we have to try and take over four little sites right here. And when we take over these four sites, uh, it will make it so that it empowers the compass and lets us do awesome special stuff. Now, Ooh. as always, when you first saw off in Total War, there is a first battle, right? Um, Jade Dragon here has uh, powerful astromancers that's sort of what he buffs and you uh yeah start off with an astromancer that increases your mobility so you move a little bit further okay so ready to do the first battle um yeah but let's let's just explain the new stuff that have been added for him oh before we fight you know that's not a bad idea i think people want to see the new stuff so you're right man let's do that first okay so as i said a moment ago you have four places you're trying to get to and once you take them over you're going to rebuild these like landmarks to help empower your big compass thing right so you're going here here up in the north and the other two are both down in the south somewhere and if you notice looking at the map he starts like halfway up the continent so most of the stuff is to the south uh in my earlier playthrough i made the mistake of going mistake of going north north first and so i like didn't go the correct way but whatever um so his new abilities you'll notice he has steel and stone uh which in this case you, you ever seen a green stone what's a green stone called um uh, jade that's right jade. he is the jade dragon and he gets jade abilities uh, so he either has steel actions or stone or jade actions in this case. So steel stuff's typically more aggressive. Things like, uh, you know, you could instantly re finish all recruitment in an army, you know, which is very useful late game. You can, your next hero action is a guaranteed success, which is especially useful for things like assassinations. Or stone actions, uh, you increase the control or, and decrease corruption of a province, or you can instantly complete construction. You know, all very cool stuff. So the thing to know is when you use them, it uses the two, and then it goes on a cooldown for like three turns, then they come back. You know, same thing, you use the two of these, it goes on cooldown for two turns, it comes back. And you can increase these numbers available, because obviously you need to to be able to do some of the, you know, higher tier actions. And um, then the final tier um, of mm -hmm. steel, you need three steel and three stone, or and then... Four and four, yeah. So it uses both of them instead of just one or the other. Uh, and these are things like... Battle harmonies. Units count as both yin and yang and for activating battle harmony. So that makes you a little bit more effective in battle. Huh. And uh, this one says, choose between a set of powerful permanent bonuses for your faction and only one bonus can be active at a time, though. All right, cool. Uh, and something to point out. What's this shape like? His sword. His sword, right? Because he is... The Dragon Executioner. That's his official title, the Court Executioner. So that's if you... 
you know, see, he said it right there, right? And so you know it's an executioner because if you look at his sword, it sort of flanges down there at the end. Yeah. It actually provides extra weight, so when he swings the sword, it chops those people's heads easier. Yeah. All right, we're fighting against the Blue Vipers, against Drock the Horrible, and uh, we're going to go into this fight, right? Um, he also has two sets of hounds, uh, like um, warriors on hounds. Oh, those are warriors on pigs. Pigs? Yeah. Or orcs ride pigs. Have you never zoomed in on the orcs? No. Oh, dude, you got to see these. These are savage orcs. Um, so they're a bunch of like crazy green skin orcs who like paint themselves, you know, in like blue paint and stuff and run around like doing all sorts of wild things. Uh, I like the Jade Court. So you and Bo right there, very classy guy, very well kept, put together. Um, yes. He has spells from the Lore of Heavens. Um, so a lot of so if you've done the other Cathay guys, it's not as aggressive for the most part. Uh, you'll see the spells in a second. What am I saying? Yeah. He does have one unique spell though that is so super cool that I have to show you right here at the beginning because you were saying earlier that when you pay, played him, you, you didn't find him very powerful, but oh, I did because. Once you find this spell, you'll see instantly. All right, so we've got our J Dragon right here. So let's uh, look at him, right? Boom, with his purple plume. Love oh. it, love it, right? Got the Executioner Sword right there. But he has a special ability called Transformation of the Dragon. So you can turn into a dragon after 30 seconds of gameplay. Oh, did you see that animation he just did? It? I do, right? He like covered it in jade. He's like, all the jade, all the time. Right, but he has this called the Emperor's Executioner. Did you ever play Axe in Dota 2? Um, no. Okay, so Axe has this special ability when people get on low health, you can, it's called dunking them, and you hit them with the axe, and if they're below 20% health, it instantly kills them. Oh, so like they jump and like hit, hit people Exactly, on the head. right? So that's this guy's ability too. So if they get below 20% health, he can execute them with this ability, but you only get one shot in the battle. So if you mess it up, too bad. You don't get it back. You only get, that's why it says that one right there. So in the battle, over the course of it, if the other person gets really weak, I can execute them if I'm in this form. And that's going to be really useful here in a second. Now, so, he does come um, with new units. So, like, we got our crow men right here. Yes, he comes with crow men. We saw that in the trailer where a crow man um, gave him a note. Yep, that's right. So and so our onyx crow men right here, we're going to put them over on the side because they get vanguard deployment. And we got our long riders. His other new unit is this jade lion, jade lion who you and I both... We're surprised it is not as strong, I Wait, guess, as we thought he has was. a special ability. He does. He has Dragon's Breath. So he is very, he is not as tanky as you think he would be, at least early on. Yeah. So don't run him in thinking he's going to just like keep like being able to get smacked forever. Uh, he will eventually <laughs> run out of health. So he's not, a, he's, not, he's not a tank tank. He is an aggressive lion tank. Last, last time I played... Um, all of my cavalry were like, doo, doo, doo. let's go over there and hide in the bushes. And yeah. they weren't even on low health. Yeah, you don't want to hide your cavalry in the bushes. That never I, really works I, out for I didn't do that. They just did it. Yeah. Oh, well, let's, let's have these guys do this way. So we're going to have our spearmen. So spearmen, we always have attack. The cavalry and warriors, we have attack other warriors. Dragon, we'll have come in. I don't think there's any... Artillery, but if there is, we'll take care of it. So this is interesting. So if you'll notice his spells, right? We want to get other people down to a low health as fast as possible, right? So if you'll notice, he has Shim's Burning Gaze, which is strong against fire. No, single combatants. So if I hit that against a lord, it'll delete part of their health, and I can execute them faster. Now his Astromancer has Lore of Metal, so it's good against larger numbers of people, which is. Pretty fun. Oh, right? they have artillery. Right. They have firepower. That's archers. Right. So let's get our longma back here. So yeah, you see the pigs? Ugh, that's yeah. really... They're on top of those pigs, man. They're like, oh, wow, all the pigs, all the time. All right, so we don't want our lion to just run in there just yet, but we do want our crows to tie them up. Good, good. Go to the right. And where do our other spearmen go? Oh, there they are. Can okay, go that way, go this way. So you everybody. just want the spearmen to take care of the cavalry warriors fight more warriors? Pretty much, yeah. I'm. That's what I'm doing here. And let's get our crowmen out of there. We don't want them to get just I, getting beat up. Same thing with our longmine. They did the charge. So they're looking good. 
Right. Sorry. But can I tell you something? Go for it, man. What's um, up? Whenever I play, I just I just make them all charge into the Lord so I can kill the Lord so I don't have to fight them again. You know, that's called sniping. That is a brilliant strategy for the most part. I mean, here, though, because the battle has just started, I don't necessarily want to do that because he doesn't have... He hasn't been beaten up very much yet, right? So I want to try and start whacking away at his health before we do that. All right, where'd my longbow riders go? Did you guys fly back into the battle again for some reason? It's not that. All right, and we're looking good here. And, ooh, we can hit him with the shim with the... Watch this. Yeah. So it's going to rain down some metal on these guys right here. Oh. Nice. Um, I looked at all the spells in the game. The goofy spell in the game is actually um for the little guys, those little goblins. They have a spell where they summon in a moon and it just goes... <laughs> the goblins are hilarious. Uh, everybody loves the goblins for reasons just like that. All right, so let's get our... And let's get our... Because they have ridiculous uh, spells. There. All right. Where is that enemy lord? So what we're looking out for here is you'll notice he still has a lot of health, right? So we're going to supercharge this spell and hit it again. Oh, did it fizzle? Ooh, <coughs> nailed him. All right. So the thing to look out for is he'll get this little symbol above his head. And once that symbol pops up, that means that he is ready to be executed. Execution. Right. And so that is what we're looking out for is that execution symbol. Because we do not want to miss it. Although it looks like we'll probably finish the battle. Yeah, before there was a reason to execute him. But yeah, but I always like to just keep the battle running until I actually kill the leader. You know what, man? I'm right there with you. Let's just... uh. So Okay, see it right there? It popped up on top of his head. Right, so boom, click it. Boom. Ready for this? <laughs> Executed! Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so he will not be troubling us on the map anymore after that. Yeah. But guess what? There's another copy of him on the other island. Yeah, well, there's more of the Blue Vipers. So, yeah, there's more Blue, blue Vipers to deal with here. But that executability, um, especially if you're fighting multiple armies with multiple lords, that can be really handy uh, to have. <clears throat> um, so, so, Squid, how long have you been playing Total War? Because, I mean, you play it with me whenever I'm working on these videos. I mean, I'm always kind of talking to you about what's happening in the background. You come over here and you run around it to yourself. Um, so, I, um, I've been playing for maybe two years now. I don't know. Yeah. So, I am going to replenish years, these, these troops right here so that, you know, they get a chance to heal back up again. And we killed oh, Drog Horrible and uh, got some money for it. So, we're all good right there. Yeah. And, all right, so we got a level, right? We can take, this is a good excuse to look at his skills. So I typically go route marcher first, just because if we're going to play an entire campaign, moving an extra 5% every turn does add up. Uh, inspiring presence let, lets you buff your little, like, your peon guys, but let's be honest, he's a dragon, he doesn't care. Um, you get extra spells, and he is a very powerful spellcaster, so always useful. And then he's got sort of his own spell skill line here, which is targeting range for Emperor's Executioner and extra number of uses for extra uh, executioners. So oh, you, yeah, definitely get that. That yeah, is I, I, really I, good. As soon as I saw that one, too, I was like, yeah, definitely yeah. the first one you want to pick up because you can use it twice in a uh, – oh, wait. He's judge, jury, and executioner. Do you understand that reference? You're not old enough to watch Judge Dredd. I don't let you watch that. So, <laughs> One day you will watch Judge Dredd with me. Today is not that day. All right, and we're going to go down here. We do not have anything better yet, so we'll start off by just building two peasants. We do have an empty slot. Um, looks like this is a ruined dock. And then we can floating pyramid. Okay, oh, floating pyramid, there we go. It looks it's like we have slayer. another guy between us and them called Gormog Gitrincha. He's going to attack us next turn, actually. Probably, yeah, we got to watch out for that. All right, and we got a bunch of stuff we got to do for the end of the turn because this is Cathay and we have to administrate an entire society. First off, technology. Um, seasoned trackers, we get extra range and replenishment, depending on who Ooh. we're playing as, but that's where we have to start. Oh. The Wuxing Compass. You'll notice we do have some things locked right here. And as we unlock places, like as we defeat those places I was talking about, we get extra directions for it to po uh, point and give us extra abilities. But in the meantime, we're not near the Great Bastion, so that's not useful. We're not really doing anything with caravans yet, though we could. 
We can get extra control and income from all buildings, or for having issues with corruption, we can do that. I actually just say extra income from everything. That's that's, and chance of winds of magic increasing. So that's typically the one I go with, just because it sort of default runs in the background. And as your cafe, you can also put a caravan on the roads, right? Because their whole thing is sending out these caravans. So let's recruit a caravan guy and gets along my rivers. That'd be pretty cool. Additional gunner units. Ooh, I'm gonna say long my riders because those are really handy. And we can send him to go anywhere. Where do you want to send him? Um, different places get different bonuses. Like if we go to the vampires, like typically this also gives us opportunities for um, diplomacy. So I typically start by going to the empire. Yeah. I'm gonna go there. So this is sort of like the biggest human imp uh, human <laughs> population. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, we go there and it starts our trade contact with them and opens up some nice trade opportunities and alliances and everything else. The humans are um, a really good faction, actually. Oh, yeah. I mean, typically the humans in this game are pretty good, unless they're chaos. If they're chaos, they're evil. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty bad. All right, so... Uh, I know it's like, oh, yeah, that's plenty to do on turn one. But if you notice, we still have other stuff to do because we have an entire civilization on the other side of the uh, map there, way yeah. back at his home, oh, back in Cathay. And you'll notice, what's all this? Does this look happy and healthy? No. No, dude, these are vampires. These are the vampires. vampires have taken over Cathay. Part of it, yeah, man. These are, these are called the... Uh, the the Jiangxi rebels here and their vampire counts. You may know them in the lore as the Jade vampires. Now they're not officially in the game yet. Uh, they, they're just kind of like a placeholder faction right now, but there's some really cool mods where you can play as like cafe inspired vampires. Um, but regardless, we should probably do something with it. So I can either build a landmark for right now. Let's just, you know, build, build a landmark, right? We don't really have a whole lot of money, but we can start fighting these guys if you wanted to. It's just sort of like, where do you want to concentrate? Because in a couple turns, it's actually going to give us a choice. Do we want to just abandon this and stay over in Lustria or keep both? I would say keep both. You know, I do too. Um, I'm right there with you. In fact, let's go ahead and just go ahead and recruit our guy so he can be getting an army together because that is going to come up. And that's one of the new things in this uh, DLC. It's the Celestial General. So it's Ooh, like dragon-blooded. Dragon blood and shugan gone. Right, so these are descendants of the Jade Dragon. So these are actually like his grandchildren and stuff like that, because he's been around for a long time. So you got um, ooh, martial artist. Ooh, so he like kicks people. Exactly. <laughs> right. So you want Dragon Blood Shugan gone? Yeah. Right. So celestial generals are new for the DLC. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna get one of those, just because I'm sure people would like to see them. Is that all right? Okay, but um. But we are going to give one of those kung fu people once he dies, okay? I'm just I saying. I like how you just assume he's going to die. That is not say much about my play skill level. But that's cool. I'm not going to take that personally. All right. Um, now, before we end the turn, Cathay has a bunch of possible stuff when it comes to... Uh, rating. Yeah, rating and trade. So trade agreements are really important Is playing as Cathay because... That's where a lot of your money is coming from. So, like, right now, Iron Dragon, as you said, let's go ahead and create some diplomacy. Right? Um, Non-aggression. Non-aggression and trade. We're going to balance that out, and he'll give us $1 for that, which, sure, whatever. It gets us on the board, starting to work with him. Uh, burning Wind people, right? Non-aggression pack. Balance it out. Get a little bit of money. Right? So, right off the bat, we got some people that are... Oh, look, another man. All right, yeah, so Jade Custodians, because we're, so the thing is, like, once we get one, it opens up to the next, so they're all kind of connecting together, right? And so we definitely want to have it. Yeah, and you'll notice I'm getting money for each one of these, so it is super useful to set these Another up. Another one? Yeah, because they're all Cathay, right? And they all work oh, together. That's the whole idea, yeah. right? So, like, they're um, telling everybody about this one person. Bingo, uh. right? So right now, we can do a non-aggression pact, with the vampires and the rat men who live nearby. Nah. Yeah, no. I'm with you, man. Like, this game is called Total War, not Total Let's Make Handshakes. Okay, I think that's everything. <laughs> but you're on the other side of the map. You're on well, I am, but I mean, I can always go back home and help it out, right? I mean, if things get too dicey... If things get too dicey... Uh, we can always head back home and do it. Because as you pointed out previously, there is a quick route back to the other side of the world, right? Yeah. Right, do you remember how to do that? Yeah, it's, um, you, um, there's this... Oh, no, he attacked us! Yes, just like I said! You're right, man, he definitely yep. was coming for us. I'm glad we recruited those peasants, right? This could have been rough. Do you want to fight this one? Uh, 
I could tell you a few tips on. All right, man. I'm listening. I am all ears. Go for the tips. Um, always. Um, I want to tell you something. Keep your what makes the cavalry go in last, like uh-huh. a cavalry charge. Okay. And when charging with cavalry, is it best to charge from the front or from the sides and back? Um, kind of. Sides and back. Sides and back, right? You want to hit them in the flanks. The idea is you tie them up, and it's called a hammer and anvil tactic, right? Hmm. So they hold them in one place, and then you walk around the back of them, and you smack them with a hammer. But if um, a cavalry is charging into one of your best units, put your spear peasants. Yes. Oh, yes. Definitely yeah. put the peasants in front. That is cold-blooded, kid. Wow. Yes, because um, cavalry repels spears. Um, Ca- no, uh, Spears repels cavalry. Y- you're right. No, you're right. You know what you were saying right there. Battles. It just took you a second. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you're banging on. I forgot to use the dragon's breath the last battle. Remind yeah. me this time to use that dragon's breath because that is super duper useful. Does it like turn people into jade people? That'd be really cool if it did. I don't actually know what it does. Here, let's look at it. What does it say? It says jade, j- jade lion's breath. I think it's just like he breathes fire on them, not that he turns them into jade. That- yeah, but like jade looking fire. Jade looking yeah, like a green fire. Yeah, I like your version. That's pretty cool. All right, and I think I lost somebody here. Yep. Peasant archers. That's who I was missing. Peasant uh, archers. Okay, start Why do they have hats? hats like monks? Hats like monks? You mean the hats like this? Yeah. So these are actually, typically they wouldn't have metal on top. It's just a real, it's almost like a, a bowl, if you can imagine, but it's just straw that's been woven together. Um, it's a very common type of hat, or it used to be common in Southeast Asia, but think about it sort of like a cowboy hat here or a sombrero. You know, it's just like really wide because it keeps the, the sun off of them because it gets, it's really hot, man. You know, so surprise, they don't want to, you know. Oh, can back. we see what the warriors look like? Because I haven't seen what they actually. The Jade Warriors? Yeah, we will. Hold on. First, yep, send in our crowmen. Yep. Send in the crowmen to tie up the archers. Right. Use those guys to tie up the... Right, so... Woof! Woof! Pigmen! I, okay, I just called them ahead. pigmen. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and... These guys are all about to get stuck right here in a couple seconds. So... I need to use my Astromancer and drop it all on top of these guys as fast Ooh, as possible. Pow, 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 so you can like kill the big men. Kill the big men. Right. So we always overcharge Shim's gaze. Right. And we got our Jade Lion, and we'll use his breath. Oh, oh, Ooh. that was pretty cool. Get some Jade breath. All yeah, right, all right. that was actually cooler than I expected. I thought it was just gonna come out of his mouth. No, it came out of. He might have a giant lion's mouth. Yeah. So here's the uh, the J- the regular like jade warriors. They look pretty cool. They're they're definitely inspired by like er- early medieval Chinese yeah. armor. Okay. But the dragon warriors are really neat. Okay, I'm gonna put a defensive spell on our jade dra- our jade lion because he is getting beat up a little bit. But unfortunately, oh, it's gonna go turn it the- turn to your dragon form. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't really want. I mean, we can, sure. I mean, whatever. I, I, okay, let me snipe that. But first snipe. Come on. Let me first hit this guy with another blast. Yeah, then I'm, I want to use Come the dragon on. because you're right on top of him. Yeah. Um, I don't think it actually hurts him to transform. So you transform into a dragon and you don't get access to your spells as part of it. But I'll, I'll show you. Okay, but do you get like your own dragon's breath and stuff? Um, not initially. I think you do unlock that stuff later, but yeah, he just turns into, like, a super powerful dragon, right? So watch this. Like, when he hits now, he's gonna hit a lot harder. Oh, yeah. That's right. why I wanted to do it now, because he's on really... Right, yeah, but our Astromancer's running away. Your hero's, um, your, your hero, um, is literally uh-huh. right next to the enemy hero, which is basically a tank. So mm-hmm. you need to beat that guy quick. Yeah, the enemy there is definitely tougher than I gave him credit for. That's the thing about fighting those orcs, man. Like, they may not be... The best. They may not be the best. There's a bunch of them. Here, let's get, let's get our guys in here. But basically, the orcs' entire thing is tank, tank, tank. Yeah, tanks. so they have the tank and heavy there. All right, so let's get your Jade Lion in there. He's going to tie these guys up. We'll use our breath attack on him to sort of finish him yeah, off. They, oh, it's right in the leader's way. Yeah. Nice. All right, let's get our longma. 
Make sure all this sort of. And the long are basically um the griffins, basically griffins, but with dragons. Honestly, yeah, they serve sort of the same purpose as the Empire. Like, you're thinking of the Demigriffs and stuff like that, and the Pegasus Knights for Bretonia. Yeah, same sort of concept. Uh, they even share some of the same animations. But yeah, you bring them in there, they're for flying cavalry, and when they're on the ground, they just run right into people. But you don't want to leave them in too long, because if you do, it uh, causes problems. Hey, Giant Dragon, you're the biggest unit in the game. Hey, I'm going to land this guy again, just because we need to focus on... Oh, jeez, our Jade Warriors need to get out of there, man. They're getting banged They're up pretty bad. Cracks. Yeah, they really are. So I mean, that's the thing about fighting these big guys like that. All right, I'm going to go back into human form so I can do a little bit better about fighting this guy. He just went to the ground! Mm-hmm. Whoa, you can only do that, like, once for battle. Because it takes a long time to turn back into that dragon. Yeah, form. I mean, it's not quick. I mean, they want to make sure you're making a choice when you do it, right? But, like, we want to get in here, get some Shims Burning Gaze. Oh, yeah. oh wait, um, it, um, once that guy gets below 20% health, use the execution ability. Yeah? Yeah. Cuz... Watch this, we're just gonna charge these boars really quick. Yeah, we're, we're trying to get him low, it just takes a moment here. CHARGE! Flying charge! <laughs> Boom, nice. It's so right, annoying right, hearing that. It's so annoying right. hearing Yeah, so we're gonna win pretty easily here. Yeah. So this guy's still really high health, though. And that's the thing about fighting these orc guys. I mean, they just got so much armor and stuff. But he's getting razzled pretty good. So I was saying that, you know, I don't know. They just pyrrhic victory on that one, but, yeah. We lost a lot of with uh, our base guys. We definitely need to heal up after that. Yeah. Hmm. That we did some really good damage against Yeah, I mean, you can definitely see the all-stars here. We're the Jade Dragon himself, Longmar Riders, and the Crowmen, weirdly, because I had him on top of those archers, which are pretty low. Pretty low health, so. Yeah, um, actually, the archers, I think all of the archers died. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I'll look at ours back. All right, army replenishment. Yes, please. So he just has um, one of his guys and a weak army mm -hmm. left. That's all he has. Yep. Okay. Empiric victory over here. Yeah, because I don't think we had finished recruitment on that new unit yet, so we sort of had to go in a little earlier than we wanted. Is this oh, still ours? Yeah, there. so we're going to jog right over here and finish these two off, even because he's about to run away if we don't. We'll just auto-resolve that one, though. And you just killed him. Yeah, nothing yeah. else is alive. Definitely going to auto-resolve. All right. And we'll keep recruiting here because we're going to need lots and lots of people to be able to get through all this. And we got another level or two levels out of all that. Nice. Shim's Burning Gaze and being able to overcast that. Super useful. Extra health. We didn't really run into a problem with not having enough health. Yeah. He was doing pretty good still. But... Um, yeah, Judge Tree Executioner is definitely, yeah, it reduces the cooldown, gives an extra ability. I actually think we should do Feet Footed, because that makes him quicker. It does, and he does not get any additional mounts or anything, so getting him in there faster is not a bad idea, honestly. Um, hey, honestly. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty significant speed increase. So he goes from... 46 to 53, or he gets 15% more health points. I want to do that one personally. Okay. Just because that's super useful, but I also want to give him Route Marcher so we can walk a little further. Yeah. It's the only one I really take a point in because it's just it's so useful. Uh, we got this lady who can increase Ooh, the mobility of our army doom. and boost our income. Oh, Searing Doom. So that's the thing we were firing on top of that large group of people. So then it does more damage and the yeah, cooldown is overcast slower. It. Yeah, exactly. And you're saying, like, if we need to go back and help out Major Cafe, we just go to... There. Yeah, this little thing right here is a sea lane. We just hop yeah. in here, and it'll take us back over to there again. So, I mean, pretty quick and easy movement if necessary. And we'll have these two guys. We're recruiting him a peasant army because we're going to go over here and try and clear this area out because this is all technically part of our domain in the Celestial Riverlands, so eventually that corruption is going to become an issue. <clears throat> yeah. Well, there's corruption up there. Is there? Yeah, look. Oh, wow, there is. Oh, yeah, that's not, nah, not going to be good. Looks like that's uh, Slaneshi corruption. 
Slanashi. Slanashi corruption. The worst kind of corruption. Hey, back up. I think plague corruption is actually worse. Yeah, the plague corruption is a little ooky gooky, but you like plague marines. I mean, that's, you know, yeah. so I mean, you're a little biased. That's that, actually, right? that's actually the guys I play in Warhammer 40k, the board game. I play as the plague marines. Mm-hmm. Um, it's basically a mix of the Plague Marines and um, the Plague Demons. Yeah, that is your favorite things. All right, so it says right here that once you spend the tokens, it takes five t- turns for them to come back available again, oh. and winning a battle will decrease this by turn. Now, we're fighting a lot right now, so it definitely feels like we probably should try and do one of these. Do I have any missions for that yet? So, I think they give us a mission. Defeat an army belonging to the Blue Vipers. Okay. Yeah, sort of weird that didn't trigger okay whatever maybe we'll give us a new one next turn uh we'll let this one go hit next turn we need to recuperate anyway so hey, like, see what i mean by the j you, you were talking earlier about you didn't feel like the j dragon was powerful enough but i was like nah man like if you you, you he doesn't have as big of sweeping attacks as like Meow Ying or the Storm Dragon. It's just a dude with a sword. But once he gets you down far enough through Shim's gaze, like when you hit him with that executioner thing, if you can whittle him down fast enough, man, it will cause some damage. Wait, um, I just have one question. Uh-huh. Once he gets to that final level of executioner thing, he can probably do it like when they're at even higher health. I think that is actually one of his abilities. Um because it's one of the first things I checked too. So I thought it was cool. Or that be that would be under him, and uh, because I think it's yeah, judge, jury, and executioner, and yep, it raises it up to thirty three percent instead of twenty percent. So instead of having a quarter health, uh, less a fifth of their health, it's a third of their health. So that's a significant increase in when that's available. Rally fast hand makes all of his archers shoot faster. Probably yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that can be. <laughs> there's a reason you want to go down that line first, uh, to say the least. There. All right, man. Quests, objectives. We completed that one. All right, good stuff. And we'll just. Uh, Kirsten Lord not moved. How many peasants do you think we need to take this stuff? Well, let's, let's give them a couple more just in case. But I feel like. Oh, global! Look, you haven't um got guys for global yet. Well, global is twice the cost, so early game, I personally try to avoid that unless I just really need them. And right now, I mean, it's just not a huge rush. So, I mean, we're going this way, and then we can either swing up or swing down. So I would say probably should go um, north. You should start um, um, keep upgrading your crimson skull. So we can't yet because we don't have anything else built here, so it takes a turn. So we have to, like, finish taking all this stuff. But, so, yeah, as soon as we can, we will. Um, so once you basically take over... Wait, you own the Floating Pyramid. Yeah, we already do. We're trying to take High Sentinel next. That's sort of the next place we're supposed to go. Yeah, High Sentinel. Fact, previously, it did a little quest message saying, hey, take High Sentinel. It may still be there. I'm just not seeing it. Oh, Floating Pyramid seemed to right, go back into so. the ground and come back in. Yeah, those are oh. Lizard Men Pyramids. So we'll just go over here and take this really quick now. Kadoosh. Kadoosh. Dragon stand. Right. I generally occupy as Cathay just because I know I'm going to be in it the whole game, so there's no real reason to take the penalty. No place like home. So here's that penal- uh, that thing I was questioning about. So do we want to keep Shang Wu back in Cathay, or do we want to relinquish Shang Wu and focus on our expedition and get additional 20,000 gold? Um, keep Shang I think keeping Shang Wu, it hasn't been too taxing yet. And ooh, ooh, we just unlocked some regiments of renown. That's fun. Yeah. So an, regiments an upgraded of renown. crow people. Yeah, so these guys are crow guys that get more power. Fear, eyes of the empress, extra visibility range. They can fly. Yeah, I think it's extra. And Nangal grenades. Whoa, we need those. That could be fun. That's um, that's <laughs> that's something that the lizard men get to do with bombardment and stuff like that. So I'd be really curious how that works. All right, judge. I agree with you that some little bit of speed would be a good move and you were asking about searing doom and all that enhanced metallurgy is sort of interesting because it lets everybody around sort of get uh, additional weapon damage and stuff like that which is pretty fun um our trader have an um gate level or our guy guarding hmm neither of our guys have and um, guess what mm-hmm. i've actually um shang will have actually survived mm-hmm. until turn 
What turn is it? Shangalu. I mean, we're on chain turn four right now. I mean, really, not that much has happened. Oh, over um, here in Shangalu. On, guess what? On turn four, um, I didn't have any of you know those what? guys. I think we can just sneak over there and take this really quick because I don't see anything else going on here. Let's just mm. let's just try and sneak over and see what happens. Yeah, declare war. Just. What are you gonna do, Jangshi? I mean, they're 172 and I'm 12, so I'm, I'm just saying that one of us is pretty powerful right now. Let's see what happens. And who is near you? Near the end. Ah, oh. uh, decisive victory. Nice. Okay, so. Um. Otter all right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, do you want to fight a bunch of skeletons for forever? No. I'm just I mean, we can. We can show off the new guy. I'm just who saying. Gets Lord of Grand Cathay, so he gets extra melee defense. And I just want to do there. an army that's a little bit tougher than a bunch of skeletons and a bunch of zombies, because zombies are actually the weakest one in the skeleton faction. They're yeah. the weakest one. Yeah, in I mean, faction. as far as tough battles go, this is not exactly a tough battle, to say the least. You did not lose anybody. <laughs> that sounds about right. Uh, that was a joke in the Harry the Hammer video. I was like, yeah, when fighting skeletons, your your biggest concern is just, you know, getting bored and <laughs> dying. <laughs> I'm just like, boredom. All right, so yeah, this is our big guy. He gets melee defense, or he can buff his people, or unit experience per turn in the Lord's Army, or route marcher. Actually, my dad actually have not done this before. He have not actually done a playthrough video. Um, this is his first time doing a playthrough video. Mm -hmm. He usually does noobs, guys. The last one um, he's done that is like a full video noobs guide is probably the Harry Hammerstorm one. You gotta check that one out. Oh, thanks, I appreciate the plug there. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny because I actually do these plays in the background, but I just don't record them because I typically don't get a chance because, you know, you guys are here and your, your brother and yeah. sister are here, so it's pretty loud. So we had the opportunity, and I was like, hey, you know what, man? Let's just record as I'm playing it so you can, guys can get my thoughts at the same time because, I mean, I'm working on the jokes and all as I'm writing these, so I mean, that's why I'm playing. So, yeah, the Harry and the Hammerstorm video has a really funny joke. Yeah. Gotcha. What's your favorite joke in there? Um, probably the one where you did that um thing where you stuck the hairy hammer. On the satisfaction video from Benny Benassi, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my kids, my the... kids <laughs> like techno music, so it was fun to show them Benny Benassi. Uh, and then um, when they the did wacky. the butt thing with the Warhammer. The Warhammer on the butt, yeah, classic, classic lowbrow humor. What can I say? Um, all right, so floating pyramids available. I think we need, so because it's a minor settlement, it can never upgrade beyond tier three. That's just something about minor settlements that comes up. But that still means we can get that basic level of infantry stuff, which would be super useful for us right now because we can start Cavalry. warriors and stuff. Oh, dude, we got we, we got to get rid of these peasants like ASAP. <laughs> I like cavalry too, man, but we we got we got to get some peasants out of our army. Wait, but you still need spear peasants. Well, I mean, I I mean they're okay. I I personally think jade warriors are more useful personally. But walking horses. Yeah. I are mean, you sure? I mean, I'm gonna keep two on the flanks specifically for taking care of cavalry and stuff like okay. that. But I think for general just purpose, it's nice to just have somebody that's not. Although I say that, Master of the you have an army of peasants. Well, I mean, it's just that I, I was thinking that so they're expendable. They get charge reflection. Does that work against lizard men? Like, would they be more effective against lizard men? Because technically, lizard men are like giant lizard cavalry, right? And having a bunch of these guys just to swamp the lizard men could be super useful. Anywho, all right, we have this whole settlement, so we can do stuff. Our control's a little low, not too bad. Increased tariffs faction wide. Yes, that's just um, more money across the board. All the monies. So, um, one thing we basically, oh, there's an abandoned settlement. Um, <laughs> That's what they want you to think. Do you think it's really abandoned? Who do you think is in there? I don't know. You don't know? I actually don't want military access. I'd rather you guys pay me for the right... They pay me 700 gold to start trading with me now because that's how good my stuff is. All right, man. So this is what I was saying. Like Those trade deals when you play are worth it. So like, even right here, it's 0.1. It's like, I'm going to have to pay a little bit, but... In the long run, that's going to pay for itself, right? And we're sort of we're starting that sort of Cathay. Oh, look, Miao Ying, yeah, Storm Dragon. But if I try and get her to get an agreement, six thousand three hundred ninety-five. Is that worth it? No, yeah. no, gosh, no. That's like half my. That's like all my income. I'm not paying her that. But let me see if I can find something else to sort of start 
chatting with her a little bit because we definitely need to kind of start working on that celestial loyalist we got to start buttering her up a little bit like eventually we want to try and confederate her and get her on our side so yeah. anything we can do and to also the steel dragon we also want to we just want to make a big line line of um, those three and just all of that faction just destroy yeah we definitely want destroy everybody to come together under gym. our benevolent rule Okay. And destroy the Jade Vampires. Yeah, well, we're already working on the Jade Vampires pretty good, so I wouldn't worry yeah. too much about them yet. All right, we're good. But we're once good. they, like, send in a, a really, really powerful leader, move. we're going to be in trouble. Move. Let's recruit two things. This will be next turn. Give them a turn to sort of get everything up. And then we'll have to go to Pahoax and sort of wipe that the rest of the way out before we go south, because I don't like leaving any wars unfinished, because that is a recipe for people to come and attack you. Oh, somebody just took that place over. Yep, so that was an abandoned settlement. Was it really abandoned, though? No, no it, had, it had Skaven in it. It had the Rat Men. Um, so that guy is the Imperial Hunts Marshal, uh, whose name is Wolfhart. Wolfhart? That's not right. Something Wolfhart. What's his name? Marcus Wolfhart. I had it right. Yeah, so Marcus Wolfhart. So he's an Imperial Hunts Master. He's, I made a video about him. He's like this dude who wears all furs in the jungle right it's like it is 95 98 degrees with 100 percent humidity and he's like you know what the fashion thing i should be doing right now bear fur just all the bear fur <laughs> that is ridiculous that man would die of heat stroke while i appreciate that this is like a video game it's like he starts in lustria whoever made that design choice like this poor man they're just <laughs> ensuring he smells like sweaty dog for the rest of his life <laughs> All right. Once he reaches into the icy areas, he's oh, he'll be he'll be fine then, right? But no, in the meantime, he is just slowly dying of heat stroke. All right, we can buff our peasants, we can buff our archers and stuff, or we can give our peasants extra armor. Hmm. We are recruiting a lot of them right now. I like <laughs> armor, and I like especially that the next one over gives extra armor for our jade dragons and stuff. But can I t show you something? Did sure. you know if you click all of those, um, it'll start with drill training mm -hmm. or... Yeah, so I'm actually going to click this and watch. It just will slowly research its way across. What? Yeah, you know that? Yeah, so you can click and it sort of cues up your research. It's much easier, right? I know. <laughs> oh, what? I know. It's so much easier. There's so many little tips and tricks and quality of life things that come up. All right, did I, did I just start building something over here? Because I want to speed this up a little bit. No, we need growth. Oh, man, I want some growth. I want to spend something. I want to use these little command point things because they're useful to have. The matter is a state. But early on... Oh, not... look. You got enough for two more. You got enough so for two more upgrades. Cool. Yeah, well, yeah. We just haven't used them yet. You, you can use them whenever. Um, that's what I'm saying. Like, next time we get something starting Wait, to build... Wait, um, what's that big thing in the middle? What was that big thing in the middle? That big thing in the middle. I don't know. Here, hold middle on. Uh, we're doing good, doing good. We got low happiness here, which is to be expected. Oh. Looks like they don't actually have very much hanging out there. Uh, yeah, I want to get just a couple more Jade Warriors in there. I like I like to be over-prepared. Like, I, I want to know I'm going to win the fight before I go fight it for the most part. Like, a little bit of planning goes a long way. Okay, what thing in the middle? Um, There's, like, um, zoom all the way out. Okay, there's all this, the way out. There's this... Big thing on your way there. That. That. So this is actually an island. See it? And this Whoa. is the vortex. So this is where all the elves live, or the high elves live. And this is the what's called like the maelstrom. So this is all the magic in the world that's sort of containing it to keep it from spilling out and destroying everything. Pretty cool, right? It's the, like a tornado of magic. Yeah, the giant tornado of magic. That's Ulthuan. Home of the high elves. You got Asur. Why do they have to protect magic? The world. Mm, oh, they're not destroying the world. They're keeping the world from getting destroyed. I know, but how are they keeping that magic in one place? Would you believe if I told you they're, us they're using magic to contain the magic? <laughs> are they literally doing that? Yeah, that's the problem with magic as a plot device. You just start waving your hand and saying, magic. <laughs> it's like, uh, I don't know, man. Like It feels like, oh, dilemma. So remember how we sent off that caravan? So we have a dilemma right now. We can either fight the ogres or we can give up a little bit of our cargo and they like us a little bit more because they're basically demanding that we pay a toll to continue. So which one would you do? 
fight or pay up? Uh, wait, they have rabbit? No, they have an ogre, two goblins, an uh, ogre guy, and then some lions. That's not that powerful. I agree. Draw weapons. Decisive victory. We were right. Boom. That's Die. right. Die! <laughs> they, they all died. All right, we and we had no guys die completely. Yeah. Well, the problem is if we keep getting attacked, that could be a little issue. All right. Gain a moderate income. Okay. And upgrade enemy settlement. Okay. Upgrade any settlement building, gain a moderate income. Okay, ooh, oh man. Oh, that's a lot of a lot of vampires coming right at us. Um, we can either try and sally out and get him, or we can... Get cool, gross! Or we can... Um, get the cool crows. Get the cool crows. I feel like just... Uh, let's just chill right here. Let him come to us. What do you think? Cause, I mean, and then just buy buy a bunch. Of stuff. Yeah, right, let's see. Let's look, get one more round of stuff, and then he'll reach us. Yeah, he'll reach us next turn, and then we should have more men, and he'll have less men. But it's still just zombies and dire wolves and fell bats. So it's not exactly like it's a huge I deal. I think that's gonna be. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is, it could be something really bad. I don't think it's gonna be anything really bad. By the I way, whoever's doing the mini map back at CA, if you guys could zoom the mini map out slightly, so the whole mini map fits at the same time that would be jinkies because having to scroll the mini map is a tad bit annoying all right what do we got here floating pyramid okay so this is one that i'm gonna do instant instant on ready because you to take four turns i want to wait four turns because i'm like i'm super impatient right so i am going to rush construction instantly complete construction at the floating pyramid here right and perform Badoosh! Instantly constructed. Pretty cool, right? Oh, 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 we can do the same thing over on the other side of the world. Watch this, right? So we just did that, right? And that used up our two stone, okay? But remember I said, oh man, I'm worried about this guy getting to us in time, right? And having enough guys because he's coming towards us. Watch this. Okay, so we get our guy, right? And we're constructing all this stuff right here. And you know what? Oh man, let's, let's, be, let's be super cheesy. Uh, let's not be super cheesy. We'll just be a little bit cheesy. All right, so we're gonna matters of state. And we're going to finish our completing our army, right? So if I use it on this guy, he's going to finish recruiting both these guys instantly. Boom. Oh, and then you can recruit more guys. On top of the two guys I was already going to construct, right? Ah. Isn't that crazy? It's like, oh, yeah. He thought he, <laughs> thought he was coming here to, to attack an undefended settlement. He was wrong. <laughs> he was so wrong, he just didn't even know it yet. Oh, man. Uh, corruption is going up, I think, so we got to watch out no, for that. No, it's going down. Yeah, so when can we... We can do our compass thing, but we have to wait four more turns to do the compass thing that drops corruption. But I think we should be able to do that. Um, but also, I just have one thing. Are you going to recruit another guy to protect that settlement just in case more vampires come? Uh, we can, but you'll notice that he can't reach it this turn. So if he's going to get close enough, we'll be able to sweep in behind him to sort of get behind him right there. Yeah. Right, so it's not one of those things we have to like just be. We can sort of wait to see what happens a little. Yeah. Unless he rushes, which could suck. But also the, the corruption thing we can handle with a matter of state as well because we can do the crackdown once it becomes available. But in yeah. both cases, like they're going to be available again in what, five turns? So I mean, like it's not like it's a huge rush right here. All right, here we go. Lord not moved. Yunbo has not moved. Ready, Yunbo? Yunbo! Close victory. Is close victory still a victory? Mm, yeah. Yes, it is. Resolve it. Unresolve, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, tired of fighting a bunch of shirtless nut jobs, so let's just uh, <laughs> occupy this and boom! Okay, we got some extra stuff right there. Great. Oh, you got a follower. Oh, you got followers. Got a whole bunch of things, right? So let's click on you and Bowie. So and if you look at him right here, you can actually see all this. So like he's... He has a lot more stuff. Yeah, so this is where ancillaries and stuff like that come in. So we have these different things he can use. And the game actually does a pretty good job of automatically picking what he should have and not have. And eventually we'll get some quests to get his armor and his uh, unique weapon, which are pretty, pretty cool. His weapon is called the Dragon's Fang. You know, um, presumably because he... Did he lose them or something? Exquisitely crafted from the Celestial Dragon's own teeth. So one of his his dad gave him one of his own teeth to make a... Uh, a uh, 
sword out of. Isn't that the, the backstory for Inuyasha? You know, you know, mom watches Inuyasha, right? Have you ever watched Inuyasha with mom? No. Oh my goodness. She would love to show you that show. All right. Um, we'll do an extra level of, and we'll do overcharge of shims. We're just, I want to get jury as soon as possible because you just can do that. All right. So we can do, stuff. so this gives it, makes it so that we can give people poison for a temporary time. Ooh. We can make it so they get armor piercing for a temporary amount of time, or we can make it so they get flaming attacks for a temporary amount of time. I don't know. What does poison do? So poison makes it so that, I love this new feature, by the way. This is something they added recently where if you hold your mouse over it and wait, you can then, it'll just show you the tooltip. So poison makes it so they move slower. They do less. They generally do less damage. Like they do less damage. Like whoever you're attacking will do less damage. Armor piercing makes it so that you are more likely to hurt people because your stuff pierces through armor. And flaming attacks makes it so that your base damage does more. Right. But if they have armor, it won't hurt them as much. So this does more to unarmored people. This does more to armored people. Armored people. You'd rather do the armored people one? No, 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 unarmored. Because we're fighting just a bunch of girls. Um, we're fighting greenskins who... Why? Some of them have armor. Only a couple. Only a couple. Yeah, only a couple were armored. The bosses were armored. So, yeah. All um, the bosses So, this is going to be better for fighting like, a bunch of people. This is going to be better, better for, like, fighting bosses and stuff. So, the thing is... This is an augment she can cast on someone, so she could cast this on the Jade Dragon, and then he would hit even harder for a couple minutes. Oh, yeah. So that, that's my feeling right there. Is that that's where the synergy is, right? That's where you want to do it. And also, we're going to move a little further because those are two super useful spells. So like wherever she goes, we just make slightly more money. Like His, his faction is all about making that money. Money, money. Rolling in the dough. Money, 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 money. Yep, lots of money. All right. Um, and we have the quest to do any of the other stuff yet, like gain or moderate income. Yeah, we got that one. And we can start constructing other stuff, like defense things. More crows. You can now recruit crows with that one. Yeah, so we can also do one of these so we get extra growth. And growth, income from all buildings in the province. I want crows. Construction costs and growth. So this one's good initially. But if you get that one, you... This one's good permanently. Is construction the time or cost? Get, but can I show you the one where you get crows? Yeah, I saw that. That was the uh, so apparently you can get crows two different ways. You can either record uh, get them through a recruitment chain, or if you build a lookout tower. That's what but, I was because saying. Because they're birds. Lookout yeah. tower. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I mean, because they're birds, they they roost in the tower. Because like birds roost in trees, so like the the crows are roosting in the towers. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> And, but that, that makes it so we can discover Skaven Undercities and stuff like that, which honestly there is a slight risk of, but you'll notice we don't have any corruption from Skaven right now, which means there's probably no Skaven around. Probably because Captain McSmells Like Wet Dog killed them. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, all right, let's see what we got here. He lives in the creeping jungle? He lives in the creeping jungle. Yeah, you think he would have figured that one out. All right, so all the rest of this, Monument of the Moon... And Swamp Town, which just sounds like a lovely place to live. Just <laughs> let's not attack that one yet. Let's not. Yeah, that's a human settlement, right? So technically, we don't have to attack them at all. In fact, we can open some diplomacy with them if you want to. So I they feel are like opening empire. New, I... Yeah, the New World colonies. This be good. But I've got some big game to hunt. oh, he's Scottish from. The Empire. That makes sense. Right, so we can do it on an aggression pact, or we can attack them later. It's really sort of up to you. Um, not aggression. You would do? Okay. Well, I wouldn't rush into anything personally. Uh, let's see if there's any trade stuff available. Not really. Wolfheart. Wolfheart down here. So if we want to be buddies with him, we can. I don't think he owns anything that we need to capture. Let's check. All right, that's the thing is eventually we have to capture all this stuff down here, right? Okay, come on then. What just happened? Right. Come on. Ooh, the Great Turtle. Great Turtle Isle. So we're going down here. That's owned by Dark Elves. We don't like them anyway. They're lame. Hexawaddle. That's Lizard Men for sure. And the Southern Sentinels, I believe, is also Lizard Men. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think Marcus Wolfhart is anywhere near us. But the problem is that if he expands f south too quickly, 
and he takes that stuff over, we will eventually have to destroy him because he will be in our way. So do you want to risk it or do you want to work with him? I mean, we can always just betray him later. Yeah, just work with him, betray him later. All right. Cold-blooded, man. You're worse than the lizard men. Yep, I'm just... I'm just saying. Cold blooded. I'm just saying. That guy probably smells like a sweaty dog, even sweatier than a sweaty hippo, right? Sweaty hippos? Whoa! That's an insult. I know, but right. he's wearing a coat I in the middle unassigned... of the summer. Oh, the caravan master. I guess the caravan master beat that battle, so he gets extra stuff. Um, wayfinders, local guides, hidden stores, will of the dragons, which gives leadership, tactician. Which gives... Yeah, I don't care about any of this. And whenever I do caravan stuff, it's like, oh, chance of ambush lowered by 50%. Like, that's super important. That means that whenever that prompt comes up, he's less likely to fail. That's about the only time I ever really interact with that. All right, we're going to give this guy a chance to rest up. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so what do you guys think of the DLC so far? Obviously, this is just one part of it through the Jade Dragon. Uh, it's interesting so far. One thing to note is that the locations that you're trying to go to do not change uh, on the Immortal Empires map, at least for sure. Hey, the uh, the Jiangxi rebels want peace. What do you think about that? Um, the the vampire guys. Should we give them peace? No. no. There is no peace for you. Actually, there is peace for you if you agree to give me all your settlements. Do you trade me your settlement? Hmm? No, they do not. So there is no peace for you. All things in balance. Construct three buildings that contribute to harmony. Okay, why? Well, I just did one, so. Fog. Jeez, oh, the ogres are getting handed to him. Yeah, that's something. Uh, harmony system is now province by province, so if you click right here, it tells you. It's like currently we're slightly out of whack because we built one right there. Um, so it's definitely wanting us to build another one to restore our provincial. Oh, Gotrid, Gotrid and Felix appear if we do contemplative gardens. Huh. You know, I've never actually played with them in any of my campaigns. It's never really come up where I needed them. That will be kind of fun okay. to have them in there. All right, Garrison Lord not moved. Yes, yes, you have not. But looks like Shrine of Sotek is basically unguarded. So let's uh, move over there. Garrison Lord not moved. Okay, Baoshi. Uh That guy buggered off because he realized that was the wrong move to keep attacking us. Um, all right, man. I'm thinking... Let's see if we can just sort of scoot by him right here. Actually, you know what? I got a better idea. There's a bridge right here, and I love me a bridge battle. Can I just, like, hang out on this bridge right there? And just be like, boom, come at me, bro. Like this guy on a... I'm sorry, this guy next to a bridge. Can we put him on the bridge? Is that a thing? This guy on the bridge, right? And let's see if we can get them to sort of bait and come over, right? Why do you like bridge battles? Bridge battles? Because bridge paddles are natural choke points. So what will happen is all their people are going to come right through here. And I'll put my jade warriors right there and my archers behind them. And they can do nothing except get shot when they try and walk across. So I love me some bridge battles, to say the least. Um, right, what was I doing? Extolling the virtues of bridge battles? Okay. Uh, matters of state. Our stuff's still recharging. They're going to come back in three turns. So nothing to do there. Next turn. So I'm just saying, some of the details they have done on um, the Warhammer map are just beautiful. Oh yeah, which one's your favorite? Um, probably that one. The hit that like the towers and churches. Hit yeah. On the map. So that's because there's vampire corruption. Because there's vampiric corruption, it has like this extra stuff on there. Um, press escape to skip the dialogue. Payments, payments. Peace treaty with the blue blue guys. So we're about to attack their last city, and they're asking for peace. What do we say? No! No! <laughs> you didn't want peace. You shouldn't have attacked us to begin with. Now, look, the vampires are attacking us on that bridge, man. And they have a lot of skeletons, a lot all of zombies. All the skeletons, all the zombies, and a whole lot of nothing else. You ready for this? <laughs> oh, this is going to be ridiculous. We're going to quick save this, right? Uh, do you want to fight it? 
Uh, I mean, there's a bunch of zombies and skeletons to fight. You got this one, man? Mm. I mean, come on. This is, we got to trade off on fights. Okay. Is, that's, that's the rule. Okay. All right, you got this. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to swap mics with you. So, all right, hold on. Yeah, so it looks like, oh, hold on. Battle of the Bridge of Heaven. Yes. Woo! Hey, don't scream into the mic, man. That, that blows everybody's ears out. Come on. <laughs> you got to learn some mic etiquette here. Okay. So one thing to notice is everyone's reinforcing from the same direction, which makes sense. Okay, here, let me hop out of your way. All right. <clears throat> All right. so, so I'm gonna adjust your mic down so you're good. You're good there. Oh, um, All right. where's the choke point? Where's the choke? Point? That is a very good question. Um, more I importantly, where where is the river? Uh, oh. I guess the river's over on the left. Let me see what we got here. Okay. Um, oh, there are a bunch of natural choke points. Right. So there's the the river on the left, and it looks like we're in like a swampy area next to the river. Okay, so like this is going to be swampy ground that's hard to move through. So they're going to move really slowly through that. Oh, and so we know they're coming for right there and coming from over there. Now we know they're attacking us. So I would actually recommend putting your archers up here, right, into a. You put them on top of the hill. Is the idea? Oh. Because what you want to do is when you put them up here, they can shoot. Uh, hold on, we'll do, we'll do two ranks of this. This is not working. Defenders right, so die. they can shoot over the defender's heads that way. Right, that's sort of the idea behind stuff like this. Is that because they're uphill, see? And then they can shoot downhill. That makes sense? I know, but they also shoot farther because they're uphill. They shoot further because they're uphill. Exactly right, right? And so we'll put a couple of um, guys right here because we know they're going to come to us, right? So all we gotta do. Oh, and all your your hero always put them uh, always put them like in the middle. I, I'm just saying your right? hero's out all because we wanted to buff, right? That's what he does. He has that aura around him right there where he makes everybody happy. All right, and we'll lock those guys so you can select them anytime. We're gonna turn off skirmish so they won't run away. All right, ma'am. And so here's your big guy, and he has this little ability right here. Uh, which he can click to give people extra defense, uh. right? And that's the only ability you got to worry about. Ready? So basically, I think I'm just going to not move them. You know what? I think it's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see how it works out for you. Go ahead. Because not moving them, they have a bunch of zombies. Yeah, stuff. they have a bunch of zombies. We have a lot of yin and yang, like because the archers are being reinforced by spearmen. Everyone's got sort of a good balance going on right here. I think that... Oh, they uh, also have the yin-yang. Everybody has the yin Yep. Yin Everybody's being properly benefited and in perfect harmony right now. And so. why are they doing them with their wolves? Their wolves? They're going to try and get their wolves around behind us. So you're going to have to watch out for that. So you may have to use your spearmen right there yet to go. But don't don't move them yet. Just the sort of wait. If you see them coming, though, that's why they kind of kept some spearmen back there. So you can sort of go around the edges. Okay. I'm just going to put them right there. Go for it, man. Sorry, right. You're fine. Left and right click. Here, move your hand up on the mouse a little bit. Um, like this? No, like that. Now, right click, left click to move. There you go. Now they move over that way a little bit. <clears throat> so now they're protecting the side of the archers. Yeah, protecting their flanks. Uh, looks like most of the army, if you look on the mini map, is going to be coming from down there. So I actually think you can move your guys over on the left flank up a little bit. Right? Move them up and over because I don't think they're going to be needed. Yeah. Move those guys up a little there. Yeah. Move, my warriors. Yeah. You guys take care of the cavalry. I'm sure there's some sort of advanced wisdom about, like, not waiting for your opponent to come to you. But so we're in a pretty good defensive position. So I just don't feel it's necessary to... Uh, uh, they're wolves. They haven't moved. Yeah, so they're waiting on their reinforcements to arrive is what it is. So if you... Uh, so what's happening is they're waiting for those reinforcements to show up. And then once those reinforcements show up, I think they're going to try and attack then. So... We can wait a moment or two because, after all, they they attacked us, so they eventually will be forced to attack us as that's how the AI works. But yeah, right, so those reinforcements just arrived, and they're waiting that whole time for their reinforcements to show up. Yeah, so let's just sit here, um, relax, and watch this battle, which is going to take forever. So this mic's a little tougher. You gotta um, be you gotta be closer when you talk on that mic. So um, this is going to be a long battle. Right. Their they're hounds moving. are moving. Mo yep, their hounds are moving, ma'am. Oh, All I. Right. So what are you gonna do? Um, move those spearmen back over there because they're attacking from that side. Right. So you're gonna move them like right there. Yeah. Okay. And then move. No, no. Don't tell me what to do. You do it. Eh, whatever. 
I'm going to move these spearmen back right there. Okay, I'm go gonna for move it. move them back because... They are taking their sweet time to attack, man. Like, you're a bunch of dead skeletons. What are you afraid of? All right, see those wolves coming around the side there? Yeah. So it should be that the archers will see them in a very short amount of time. So I'm going to help you out by sort of doing that flank a little easier there. But, I mean, honestly, our archers should be able to see oh, them pretty nope, quick. Oh, nope, they're going around back. They're going around back. All right, but the archers should be able to shoot them in about two seconds because we're right at the edge. Huh. Yeah, so it's just... funny. That's one of those things about the AI. It's like, yep, yep, <laughs> nope, we're just going to stalk right at the edge of your firing arc just like it wasn't even there. Oh, they're okay. coming. It's all right. Oh, dire wolf. They'll, they'll start shooting automatically if they're in range. Yep, see? Oh. Right, so they thought they were being cute, and they're like, ah, we're going to sneak around the edges, and then didn't work. Uh, actually, do trees work like you get hidden? So, yeah, the, tr the trees, if they had gone into the trees and we hadn't seen them gone in, it would have been a little more hidden. The, the game's a hidden system. Is, so, like, also, if you're in the trees, you, it's harder to shoot arrows into the trees. But if you're, if you're like, an elf hiding in the tree, you can shoot arrows out. Um, oh, I get it. So they, they want to make it so that you utilize the trees and, like, hide and stuff like that. So that's why they're sort of scattered all over the place. But, like, right now... Wow, the wolves are... <laughs> the wolves are so cute right now. Yeah, they're they're not... Uh, whatever the strategy there was, it's uh, not, fun. not working out. We may have to attack them eventually because I don't know if they're going to... Oh, they're coming. Now they're coming. Here they go, right... I, I think he thought he could get around me with the wolves, but then the AI ran into the collision from the edge of the world map right here, because you'll notice like we're right up against the edge of this rock formation on purpose. So, yeah, I think it's having difficulty navigating around that. Uh, All right, ma'am. Now they're really, really slow. Get they're this. slow. Well, I mean, they're zombies. What do you want from them, man? You play Death Guard. You know how slow they are? Just a bunch of... Look yeah. how slow these suckers are. Look at them just like walking yeah, around. Yeah, them... Move farther. Come on. Put on some nice fancy effects. Looks really cool, right? That's how I film. It's my reshade settings. Uh, I actually kind of like that. Like the army you did is coming. Yeah. It looks really cool, but it's it here, I'll show you. So like what I normally do is I press K and then turn that on. And it's like, oh right. It's like super cinematic looking, which is super fun to record with, but really a pain to actually play with. <laughs> Um, like if you actually want to play the game, you kind of got to turn that stuff off. So, I mean, it can look really cool, but that's not as useful. So, right now, we're just dumping arrows oh, into these no. guys, man. The skeletons are holding their shields up. Yeah, so they are shielded, right? They do have some shielding, and so it's not going to be as effective, right? But you'll notice... They are taking... Oh, they're, they're already crumbling, man. Like, nothing's got to happen right there. Oh, and also the spearmen... If they had, oh, the swordman, the direct front. That's right. what they're going to say the most. Yeah, who, what we actually need to do right now is this. I want to get all these guys, and if we focus... On one of their leaders. Like, yeah, I kind of want to focus fire one of the leaders, just so like it's a little bit more effective. Like, I want to see what happens. Like, can we all shoot that guy? Oh, yep. Beep, beep, oh, beep, nope, beep. stop that. Come back here, you. Come back here, you. Right, so if you'll notice, I mean, he's taking some pretty heavy hits right Our off the bat there. have uncovered hidden foes. Have they? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it was the guys on the right. We already knew they were there, though, so, like, we're, we're just pumping some arrows right into this guy, man. We, we just... We just can't let the big man get yeah. so I actually And think now they're that, sending in a bunch of skeletons. And yeah, I, I think back. that kind of... We're going to need to figure something else out here. <laughs> pumping Bats! arrows into the... Don't, don't scream, man. Microphones, bud. Microphones. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't really understand um, what microphones do yet. This is my first um, video with my dad. Okay. Um, well, you said you wanted to start streaming with me, man. So I was like, I'm going to make it happen. We're going to make it happen. All right. So you got your celestial general. He needs to reinforce somewhere. Where should he go? Um, I'm saying he should help take care of the bats. All right. So we tell him to target the bats. And we can tell everybody right here to shoot. Uh, oh, start. Nope. Wrong button. Misclick. Misclick. So the bats are already breaking. So that's good. Um. How about um. How about um. Send some reinforcements over to help that big clump. Okay. So we can tell these guys to start attacking here because the story is hanging out. So everyone's doing a good job holding right now, right? Oh, direwolves! Direwolves! Right there. They got around. Yeah, they did. But you notice they're sorry. They're already breaking a little bit. So that's um, that's good. Spearman now, zombie spearman. 
You're right. not. You're not trying hard, CP. You, you're. Our archers haven't even moved an inch yet. Mm -mm. And we can also don't forget give them this extra ability of defense. So if you want to like do some. Oh, this buffs everybody. Oh wow, that is super powerful. Look at that. So that tells everybody in this whole area to have extra defense for the next um, 16 seconds. I didn't realize it was like a, a buff for everybody. That's crazy powerful. I thought it was a buff for everybody in the aura, but no. Yeah, so we're going to come over here and we're going to charge him in just because I want to try and get this whole area. Smash skeletons. They're not, they're worthless. <laughs> they're so worthless. we're going to try and get in here and I want to wrap up one side. So he can, oh wow, he got some good attacks. See him spinning around? Yeah. Alright, man. What are you thinking here? Yeah. The dire wolves are still hitting them! They are, yeah. Here, we'll, we'll pump some more arrows into the dire wolves. I'm not sure what the issue is here. Bum, 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 bum. So it looks like so the skeletons are starting to crumble. You'll notice their health getting low all over the place. So he's got to hold out, man. Yeah. We at least need to defeat those reinforcements so next time he attacks. Mm hmm. He doesn't have those reinforcements. Yeah. I'm going to speed it up a little bit here because this is going to be just a constant grind until this guys get down all the way. Um, I'm just saying. Just. Mm, this our is, own spearmen are about to break over here, though. We're going to have to do something. This is not going to work. I'm just saying. They're not going to be able to hold this huge clump of skeletons much longer. Yeah. They're not. Hold on. This guy. I, I got to go reinforce the right hand side because those yeah. spearmen are about to break. Or you can send them more spearmen. Are you guys not fighting? They were not fighting that entire time. I guess not. I guess why huh. that guy was having such a hard time fighting. Hmm. All right. Get him over here and help. Because those are breaking. Alright, we're having to open up a hole right here, but that's fine. Uh, let's have him go right. I'm just saying, that's... Yeah, we need him to get over here and do something. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just, um, saying, um, can we, um, tell them a little bit, um, about what, um, we've been, um, doing? Uh, what you've been doing? I don't know, but that's a really broad question. Like, what do you want to talk about? So, um, next time we're, e um, next time we actually do one of these videos, we're either, um, I'm going to play as the brand new Changeling, which is probably going to be last. Yeah, we can do Changeling or we can do the Witch Lady, right? So which I'm one would you rather do next? I would say Witch Lady because she still doesn't do those encampments, those tiny, like, underground things. Yeah, the Changeling's mechanics for how he actually builds stuff is a little weird to explain, especially if you're first starting off the game. Yeah. So I, I definitely think that... Coming up with a different option right there would be good. All right, let's go ahead and drop that right in the middle. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to target a unit. You can target the ground. That's useful. Oh, well. That's interesting. All right, so get our GA warriors on here. Oh, yeah. We're, see, I had to split our army a little bit here, but we're folding it up nicely. Yeah, and there are no more guys attacking right there. Their leader's mm -hmm. like, doo, 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 I'm going to go help out my zombies. Yeah, he's trying to. <laughs> And now we have a big hole open for anybody to go into. We like, do, yeah. So we gotta. We definitely are running out of time here. <laughs> like these peasants are gonna break pretty soon. That's why I sent this main general over here. Probably we should have sent him over there to begin with, honestly. But what are you yeah. gonna do? I was. Can I please have my mask? Oh yeah, go go. Sorry, my mistake. <laughs> my bad. What do you want to look at? So I'm saying the archers look neat, but mm -hmm. this guy with the giant hammer, he's probably gonna be sort of a tank. He is, yeah. He's he's a, a heavy tank guy with also also heavy hitting. So that gives Cathay three lords now. So they have a dragon blood and Shugangon, who are sort of spellcasters, and then they have the magistrates, which are light armor, but they have a lot of buffing powers. So they oh, never run to fight. This better. side is all good. Good. All right, turn them around. Go fight the other side. Hey, hey. nice. What did you think about that? that hey, that, man, was, um, that works. Okay. All right, in battle, I, I'm gonna bet that our hammer guy. And our archers did the heavy hitting. Yeah. One. Yeah. 99. Oh, man. Look at those peasants. Whoa. Man. They We're, tore it up. Yeah. Gosh. Look how much those XP rank three. Yeah. They got three ranks of XP out of it. That's nuts. All right. Let's switch streets. Come on. Yep. But, but by the way. Yeah. I was sort of surprised there. I mean, they, I mean, considering I thought their hammer guy was going to have done a lot more damage, but. Really, I mean, he is just sort of a heavy tank that also can hit occasionally. Um, 
So the Jade Warriors themselves, you know, same sort of thing. They didn't do as much damage as they yeah. thought they would have. But those peasants, man, wow, wow. just really put in some work right there. One, one squad of peasants <clears throat> got um, over 300 kills. Wow. Really? Yeah. 266... 335. Must, I know. Yeah, well, and that must have been the ones on the far right because they're really depleted right now. Um, yeah. You know what, man? Here. Peasant Long Spearman with rank. Three. Oh, you gained two ranks from that battle. Yeah. Okay, so I personally feel that those Peasant Spearmen did such a bang up job. Okay, um, same thing. We can fight some ogres or we can fight destroy ogre. one of our units. Just let them eat them because they're hungry apparently, and they want to eat one of our units. So what do Fight we say? The ogres. They have the right. same thing as the last ogres, except a different lord. Yep, decisive victory. It's all right. And we didn't even lose a single guy. We did not. That's the way to do it, man. Okay. Uh, we were right here on the edge of everything. We won. This unit of spearmen, this rank three guys, are the ones that did so awesome. They deserve a name. What do you want to name them, man? Um, uh, there were, um, how about Salsa? Salsa? Um. Like salsa? <laughs> like dipping salsa? <laughs> no. Um, how about, um, uh, I'm thinking, what does really, str really, really, really strong, like, O. OP? OP Spearman. Like Goku? Yeah, basically. Goku? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say OP Spearman, but... Oh, OP Spearman. So, OP Spearman. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, OP. Like, oh, no, no. I wrote, I wrote OP. I know what I wrote. <laughs> no, like the OP overpower. Thing. Oh, no, I, I, know, I know. It's a joke, but don't... <laughs> you're, you're, clearly, you meant OP overpowered. <laughs> All right, yeah, he got two levels out of that, so that was um, pretty pretty good. And we're going to make it so he controls things a little easier. All right, so we can either go north and take that guy's settlement before he can get there, destroy his broken army. Um, I would say just take over Bridge of Haddon. I don't know, man. Like, he's he's wounded right now, and I really don't want to let him get away. Do you know what I mean? Like, when, if there's a wounded enemy nearby, I like to go in and, like, finish them off before they get a chance to come he back was like, later. He like, boom, all of them died. Yeah, we got all of them. That's just that they were wounded, right? So, I mean, we wanted to get in there and before. And he just gained another level. Oh, we can do both. Yeah, there we go. Boom, boom. Right, one, one two, one, two. Get the one, two punch there. All right. Oh, by the way, um, one of, one of my dad's guys... And Warhammer is actually called Two Punch Man. Two Punch Man, yeah. We have a we've been we've been learning to play 40k. So uh, I have a, a miniature. He's just got two giant fists, and so he's called Two Punch Man because he's not One Punch Man. That's why. Yeah. All right, Iron Disciplinarian, and we'll do uh, Neg of Attrition. That'd be nice. Inspiring Presence and Fervent Corruption. <laughs> Negative Corruption seems like it'll be useful right now. Oh, well, All right, this man. entire and area. So, yeah, if you'll notice, everything's turning green again, right? Because the corruption's reducing, which means that it is, uh, you know, slowly getting better. So we're definitely going to upgrade our capital first. Always do Shang Wu first, if you can. Always upgrade those capitals first. And then you have a sticker on you. What is that? Whatever. Um, my, my church. Oh, yeah, church sticker. Okay. We, we, went, we went to church today, so. Yep. A little Sunday afternoon fun time. All right, man. Uh, let's see what we got here. Blah, blah, blah. Only one province left down there. So we're doing pretty good, man. We've almost retaken Shang, the entire... Shang Long, the most powerful one. Shilong. So Shilong, the bridge of heaven, and our main city was Shang Wu. And the Baleful Hills to the north. So yeah, looking who pretty good. Who belonged to Shang Wong? Who, who had Shang Wong? Shang Wong. Wong. I haven't seen Shang Wong. All right, man. And oh, then we can Wong. finish taking over this area and finish wiping out the Blue Vipers. And yeah, man, occupy that. Have we killed? We killed the blue vipers. Blue vipers are done. All right, and we're starting to get our, uh, our our things back online. So it looks like it gives us one, so three turns and then five turns. So yeah, they're coming back online pretty quick actually. So we'll have that pretty soon there. Um, and this gives us new compass dials. And it says each time you declare a new fortress, city, or commercial district, district, you will gain an additional stone. I have not seen anything about commercial cities or fortress districts, so I don't know what they mean. I'll have to look that one up. 
they have added some new stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah, it's definitely new. The so he's, new all, he's getting ready to drop his cargo off soon, man. It's been a long journey coming here. All right, and matters of state, diplomacy. Do we have technology still researching? Okay, I guess that's everything, right? Um, No, I don't think we still have... Um... Oh, unassigned skill points. Judge, jury. So let's give him another thing of fleet-footed. Okay. Um, and she has a couple as well. Give her boost income. Good, good. So we make even more money every turn. He can make so much money. Whoa. It's just, that's his thing, man. It's like he's always turning over cash. Yeah. Oh. New, New World Colonies definitely want a peace treaty now. Like, those are these guys right here. I just, I worry because they're right on the door with Lizardmen that we're going to have to fight them pretty soon. I don't know. Uh, so we can go up and take Hexoatol, Hexoatol, or we can uh, make peace with these guys. What do you want to do here? Not make peace. You don't like peace. You do not like peace. What well, I kind of like peace when you're doing it with your allies. They eh, makes sense. So better scales, increase sell value of cargo. Ooh. That'll be handy. <laughs> Building upgrades. B. Right off. Sorry, my dog has decided to be rather annoyed about people living next door like how dare they live next door near us beatrice all right um upgrade our main little high sentinel place right there that'll be useful by the way um if you are new to the game always start out with the empire they have a they have a sturdy sturdy army if you're really you like empire that's your favorite um it's just not by the coolness. They have a pretty balanced army. You know, I mean, that really is their play style. That is legitimately true. I mean, they so, have a little bit of everything. You name it, they have some of it. So, um, if you're beginning to play Warhammer like you're trying to figure out your first campaign, play as them. Ooh, a new quest. Occupy, loot, or sack three different settlements. And then we'll get the uh, to reward ourselves with the armor of the Dragon's Gaze. Ooh. Gives us 20 relations to all Grand Cathay. And the ability Armor the Dragon's Gaze, which gives us unlimited damage resistance and immune to psychology. Unlimited power! Pretty much. Go, Trick and Felix! Should they be persuaded to join your cause, they'd be truly formidable allies. Huh. Or Gorak and Felix. Go, Trick and Felix. So they're from a Warhammer book series. It's sort of an adventure series. So it's this dwarf and, like, his wandering companion. And they, um... Adventures through the world. Yeah, pretty much. So it would be really useful to go down there and recruit them. I'll put it that way because they're they're pretty powerful. And honestly, we need to take a couple turns to sort of reinvigorate ourselves anyway. So yeah, you uh, can move really really far now. Yeah, because I mean, there's nothing really in our way. Nothing's attacking us. Although we should probably watch out for Slanesh. Just saying. I'm just saying we got to recruit those two as soon as possible. Yeah, and also we've been developing uh, our stuff down here so we have some units and stuff we can uh, actually recruit back in and kind of improve our army so it's useful to kind of backtrack for a second here all right garrison lord not moved bao shi or bao kia bao chia bao chia because the x is a cha all right he then, really needs a better name <laughs> what's his name it's just not one that's common here bao chia bao chia bao wow we're not going to make fun of people's names from other continents, buddy. Take this. All right, here we go. And good. He got a new crown of command. Hey, look. Um, got all the Riverlands. Um, the faction of young she rebels are destroyed. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and she was about to totally take that unless we took it. That's why I ran right over there. And that whole province now belongs to us. There is no more corruption. Somehow that has been banished. All the corruption is gone, and this guy's got a level. So, man, this dude did it. You know, he... Did his job. Harmony, spell resistance, hard to hit, inspiring presence. I mean, he really... He put up some numbers, man. I was not convinced this guy was going to do it, but uh, he united all the provinces and everything, and uh, everybody's happy, so let's turn on some tariff income. Because Lord knows I love me some moonies in this. All right, we got our whatever mahoos it's back, our, our stone and our steel. So if we want, wasn't didn't we have like a major settlement upgrading over here somewhere? Yep, three turns. So let's finish upgrading our major settlement. It's the other. Target instantly completes. Yep, it should be this thing, I think. Target. Nope. 
Oh, that's you're right. That's one turn of recruitment. My bad. All right, so it's rush construction, which is not available for another two turns. So that, yeah, I guess they don't want us to abuse that, which makes sense. All right, cool. We'll wait two turns. Uh, okay. So when do you want to stop today? What's what should be our timer? Like, what's our like objective for the day? I. Don't. I mean, we, we booted out all the vampire rebels, and that's what I really wanted to do. That's the thing I was like, yeah, yeah, that's my main goal. Hmm. I'm. I don't really know. Don't know, man. All right, man. You got. What do you? What do you usual usual gamer? Caravan completed for three thousand eight hundred and forty gold. <laughs> man, that is a good. And we got a luminarc lens, which lets us fire a fireball at people. Well. Pretty cool. Right? I'm just saying, what do you usually gamer usually gamers what um what time do they usually stop at? Well, I mean, you can either do it by time limit, so it's like an hour long, or you can do it based on, you know, objectives. So like in this case, I really wanted to get rid of those vampires. And I did. And so that was sort of the thing I was wanting to do for today's stream. So what do you want to do? I'm just saying, um I'm saying um I'm we can go get Gotrick and Felix for sure. Yes, we're definitely gonna do that. Okay. How powerful are they? It's just you guys. My understanding is pretty darn powerful. So we can recruit them. You've managed to meet the legendary duo, Gotrick and Felix, while they travel through the province. Over some tankards of ale, Gotrick reveals to you that he is seeking the most heroic death possible. Felix suggests that he and Gotrick join your cause. The Slayer seems unenthusiastic at first, but is soon persuaded that you can help him achieve the great doom that he craves. Felix tells you privately that really he welcomes the safety in numbers our forces will provide. Hiram? Hiram. Hiram. Let's get some aliens after that ruckus. It is a mystery how we overcame such odds, but I am sure I can articulate something. Gotrick and Felix are recruited. So Gotrick is a general, and Felix is a hero that kind of accompanies them everywhere. So I would, so they just sort of move along beside us, and they'll join us for whatever battles, right? But he has we'll look at his stats and stuff, right? So no armor, but he'll never run away. Lots of health and ridiculous amounts of damage. So just, uh, yeah. Because he's a slayer. That's it. Yep, dwarf slayer. So the dwarf slayer's whole thing is they run around and, you know. Did you know those who were actually a member of the Empire? Yeah. So normally you do see them in Empire campaigns. So it's pretty much human factions that can see Gotrick and Felix. So hmm. a lot of these factions. Oh, we can change the Lucian Compass. But. I personally feel that we got the best one still. I mean, we can do... Oh, sale value of cargo can go up. What do you think about that? We can do more cargo stuff? Yep. Sure, why not? I mean, we got all the maximum control right now, so we might as well. And uh, our caravan master will be back in two turns, and we can send it back out again. Uh, in the meantime, can we do any more trade uh, trade deals? I love me some trade deals. Oh, man, look. We have access to all of Bretonia now because we just finished all the stuff with all the Empire. Now we have all these guys hanging out with us, too. Oh, because we got Goshrick and Felix? Uh, well, no, because we just finished. We just did that stuff. Um, where we, um, by we, killing the vampires. Well, yeah. No, the, car the trade caravan. Oh, yeah. The trade caravan. Um, but we can make we can like make a non-aggression pact with the Bordelow Errants. Sterling. So these are people that we may encounter in the new world. So this guy is right here. Right. Sterling is way back in the Empire. Honestly, yeah, we'll just... How, how much you... Oh, like, dude, he'll pay us 972 to promise never to attack him. Yes. On the other side of the world. <laughs> I always love that because it's like, do you promise never to attack us on the other side of the world? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. That is all I ever want. Oh, whoa, 16,000. Heck no. Uh, we'll just do the non-aggression pact, and you can pay us a thousand for it. The honor of not being attacked by the Jade Dragon. Yes. We are ferocious. We are mighty. We know it. 780. This is how you make your money in this game, man. It's just like threatening to not attack people. On the other side of the world. Yeah. Well, this guy's actually pretty nearby, so I'm not sure about him, but... um. I wonder if he and he and this guy get along at all. 
Because they're right next door to each other, and I feel like eventually those two are going to scrap. And I'll be honest, if I got a choice between Soggy Dog and <laughs> uh, New World... <laughs> Uh, New World Lord of the Seas. I'm going Bretonia every time. But then again, I am a Bretonia fanboy, so that's not really surprising. All right. Um, blah, 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 blah. What were we doing? We were Garrison Lord not moved. Um, oh, Are there any more rebels or anything around here? By the way, the art in this game is very, very good. Oh, I know. Yeah, Warhammer 3's map, I mean, they really kicked it up a notch. Are those rebels? Does that say rebels? Dissenter Lords of Jinshin. So dissenter means they disagree. I think those guys might be rebels. And if so, we're going to... Oh, 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 oh! Skaven! Skaven! Skaven. Rat men. We are rat men in our midst, and sir, we will not allow that. So we'll start moving that guy's army north here pretty shortly, trying to take care of some of that stuff and expand our Cathayan holdings and eventually consolidate all of Cathay into our benevolent... Incept, incept, um, that guy right there, cause he's. Oh he's yeah, no, he, he already works for us. Like he, he's already on the right side. He knows where he's at. All right, um, Lord not moved. Have I not moved this turn? Lord not moved. What Lord not moved? Oh, you can move this turn. Um, yeah, we're just gonna skip you in that case. Unassigned skill points for Dingguo Ding. Dingguo Ding. Dingo ding. Uh, oh, it's our caravan person. So they can we can make it so they can carry more cargo next time and sell it for more too, which is pretty cool. So he has to sort of let his caravan recharge for a turn or two so he's not, you know, eaten by ogres. Yeah. Just like last time. Why, why are we only run to ogres with the same army to two different humans? Well, so ogres are sort of located in the mountains of Morn in this game. Right, so that's this mountain range right here. So every time we send a caravan out, it has to go through their territory to get to these other places. Right, so every time we do it, like, they, they want to attack us. So they want to pay us 170 gold for a military access. I counter that with, you should pay us 198 gold, because that's fair. How many You're darn right you accepted. Yeah, you should pay more. Well, I mean, that was fair. I mean, we could keep, like, jacking up the price and, like, getting an extra 20 gold. But, I mean, not really a lot of point at that point. Grandmother knows best. People report sightings of a flickering figures in their homes, chanting in oddly familiar voices. One is even certain she saw the face of her long-dead grandparents. Before these reports can be corroborated, the ancestor spirits, if that's what they are, disappear. In the, in the wake of the land, knows harmony. Six turns. Oh, baby. A hero becomes a legend. Win ten battles with any single hero character. Most battles won by a single character so far, six. So basically just keep doing what we're doing. And if you do that, what happens? Um, we get a money and a fancy shield. So basically that's how you become a legend? Yeah. So we got... Jade Crossbowmen and Jade Warriors here. So I, I think would say. I Jade, Jade Crossbow. I agree. Jade Crossbows are pretty cool. You need cool. better firepower. Yeah, the firepower is always important to bring. I mean, that's the thing about Cathay. It's sort of like dwarfs. Like, you notice, like, if I, I did really well when we turtled up, right? I mean, we're basically unkillable. So, turtling up and then letting it, <laughs> letting it sort of do its thing right there is Beep. very useful. Can Godric recruit? Um, he can, but there's not a lot of point to it because he's going to disappear eventually, my understanding is. So, like, I would say he, we're going to move him along beside us and not necessarily Wait. entrust him to do anything. Are those vampires? Those are vampires. No, they're blood keepers of corn. That's corn. It's even worse. All right, what so Great corn? Turtle Island, Hexwodal up to the north, Broken Lands way down south. And the lands of the Star Tower right here. It's unfortunate these are the same thing every time because I've done this three times now. They're the same thing. So we can either go back north and try and take Quack Swaddle really quick or go south to the Turtle Isles. Um, what do they call it? Turtle Isles? Because in the real world, that is roughly where the Galapagos Islands are. And so they're referencing the Galapagos Islands in a sort of roundabout fashion. You know Galapagos turtles, like the giant oh. land-walking turtles? So it's sort of a reference to that. Warhammer is very much based on real history in sort of a way. And so they use it for a lot of inspiration. Yeah, but the people turn into dragons, giant 
Like, yeah, well, I mean, there's like myths and stuff of people doing that in our world. So, I mean, they're, they're definitely basing that on real they're, stuff. They're, you mean, they're giant jade lions. There are myths of giant jade lions. What about giant warriors that gre- glow green? Giant, giant jade warriors. warriors? Yeah, I mean, you've seen like... They you've glow heard, green. You, you have a mythology book. You've heard stories about giants. This is not new to you. I know, but a giant glowing green Right, and here's the, here's the key, but I'm not saying it's real. I'm saying that people... Have myth, have stories they have told about it, right? And so that's where they're drawing all that stuff. Uh, I'm just saying, Beast of Nurgle the aren't a myth. That, that's just something Warhammer made up. Um, yeah, actually, I can't think yeah. of one anyway. I mean, sure, there's like a god of pestilence somewhere, but yeah, yeah. nasty grandfather Nurgle with his Nurgling swarm, pretty unique. Oh, well, there's you. He wants to pay us for military access. Yeah, sure. You can walk through our lands. That's one thing about being right there in the middle like that. Like, everybody's got to walk through, so they got to pay us money, unless they want to invoke our wrath. Which, um, be at war with dissenter lords of Jinshan. Jinshin. So, that's the guys we were already moving towards to attack. So, cool. Easy peasy, man. We can definitely be at war within and upgrade any settlement to level three. We can do both those things. Celestial General. Um, let's uh, get two more before we head north and attack those guys, though. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, what? I think it was because my mouth was mouse was between between two things right there, so it's freaking out a little bit. So, um. I think I'm, we should go north and fight Hexwaddle, just because we're already there. We've already done all the legwork, so we should just finish it up you just kill the I, yeah I mean I'm not sure we need to wipe them out but we could definitely make an impression all right we can build a, a more what advanced building is here that? so that le- makes it where we can start recruiting things like gunners and war drums and I want crane guns. gunners yes guns. always a fan of the guns so definitely. guns I'm just gotta say okay so it's gonna be a pretty tough fight though really- so let's uh what do we have access to? Do we have anybody else? Bro, men. Men. Um, let's. Are uh, gone. Henry. Mm-hmm. Alright, so let's transfer some of our peasants into this army. Just because I don't want to get rid of them, but they're not really useful. A moment to think. It's never okay. And that way we have some free space in our army to be able to recruit. Like. Hey, um, Dad, by mm-hmm. the way, um, can we recruit super cool, um, crowmen? Yeah. Overpowered. Yes. We got them. Overpowered crowmen. All right, so we got all that stuff ready. They're recruiting in. Oh, we got something to build. We increase our trade goods. Ooh. Always increase our trade goods. Uh, this one gets a, a fancy building at the high level, the Palace of the Scrolls. That's pretty fun. Ooh. Um, in the meantime, though, he really doesn't need a whole lot, so I'd say let's give him anything that increases the amount of money that he makes every turn. Because income from trade tariffs. That sounds fun. And that one is growth. So you should probably do the one for growth, because that one helps everything else grow faster. Eh, it's weird to do it right here, when we can do oh, advanced stuff right there is a though. big world event with the woe. Huh? Exclamation. What is that? Oh, we can dispatch another caravan. All right. And it looks like your siblings are coming home right now. So uh, this is as good a time as any to... Oh, man, look how much cargo we can send. Wow, so much car- uh, cargo. All right, where are we going to send him? Um, near space. So anything that's... I mean, well, the longer they go, the more money they can make. So if you want to make, like, Kislev, we can meet Kislev and stuff. Kislev? Yeah, that's the, uh, Kislev is, um, ooh, the dwarfs. The dwarfs went in a lot of Yeah, dwarfs, dwarf money is some good money, man. We want that. Yep, dwarfs. Oh, oh we're going to have to get. Ooh, go- that is worth $22,000. Yeah, definitely. Okay, wow, okay. Yeah, we definitely need that. Definitely need that one. All right. Well, this is as good a place as any to stop. We'll come back to it later if people enjoy this series. What would you think, man? First time ever um, streaming. 
it's um it's been fine seeing the details of the game is just amazing all right man squid is great co-hosting with you here today so uh we'll make sure to check the comments for comments for the squid and uh thanks everybody for joining us today for a little bit of homegrown fun and the new shadows of change dlc releases at the end of august so we'll try and get a couple more playthroughs in and expect noobs guides in the very near future thanks for watching everybody thanks thanks for watching